Hello everyone, welcome to X Penguin. That's the wrong scene. Is it this one? No, it's this one. Hello everyone, welcome. Hiya, how you doing? Uh, it's me, I'm HexDSL, and today, and as always, really, on X Penguin, I'm going to be overexcited and talk to you about Linux stuff I've done this week, I've seen this week, and had feelings about this week. Huh, that's not. I've, I've set up a whole. I, as those of you who watch regular may know, I use this, <laughs> this shitty. Cheap ass wireless thingy to change scenes. I have today fixed it. Like seriously, no more like weird scene changing. I've remapped it. Like I've got, I've got like, I've got like this one toggles my camera normally, which we don't have on this scene. And then this, this one changes to like my stream. And this one changes to solo. This one changes to like when I've got a guest on. Number five toggles the visibility of the web browser, which I'm very proud of. I've got. Um, like two for like for, for BRB and three for shutdown. I've got it down. I've nailed it. I'm, I think this is actually it. And all of this I'm telling you now is because I'm stalling while I make this. <laughs> while I make my first cup of tea of the day. Because yeah, as always, I've had a busy old day. I feel like life is too busy recently. The last few months, I just feel like there's too much going on. I burnt my finger then, but I'm very manly, so I'm not gonna cry on camera. I'll wait till I stop. Not fingers up. And I also had to like tear myself away from. Uh, I had to tear myself away from Netflix uh, She-Ra today as well. Because She-Ra, people who watch, again, people who watch Rick and I'm a massive He-Man fan. So I'm like, She-Ra's back. Yes. <laughs> it's like, it'll do. I'll take it. So hello to chat. Hello to, who we got in chat? We've got um, Bentusi 010. Bentusio. Bentusi off, on, off. I don't know. Uh, we've got Hexdiesel. Oh, that's me. Don't need to read that really. Nightbot, he doesn't care. He never answers us. The shithead to be honest, night boys. Um, we've got Akuras. Hello, Akuras. Yes, chat is working good. It wasn't working earlier, I swear down. It like wasn't working, and then you said yes, it was like starts working again, which is beautiful. Uh, so that's what we like. Sometimes I think it needs a kickstart by someone that's not me to type into it. That's <laughs> it, seems to be what happens. Um, yeah, it's working. Uh, which button makes tea? The button here, I have to put my hand under here, right? But in fact, hold on, let's, let's just fine. Look, the button here. That makes tea. This is the, this this is the tea button. Um, it's on top of there. It's probably a terrible place to keep a tea making device because the hot steam raises off the mon like raises up because up the back of my monitors and then like pulls under my TV and just and I don't give a fuck because tea is more important than technology any day, <laughs> absolutely any day. Uh, yeah, and we've also got a Linux Paul M here. I don't know if I've said that. Have I said that? Yeah, it's Linux Paul M here, and we've got a beta to ask about tea. We've got user with a name that says greetings, sir Hex. I'm not a knight. Not a knight. If ever I did get invited for a knighthood, I'd be thrilled and I'd refuse because colonialism sucks or something. Um, is it Linux powered tea? Um, I don't. I think it's just like I don't think there's any OS in my teapot. I, I'd like something Wi-Fi just so I could like, even though it's on my desk, I'd like a little Wi-Fi like 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 website I can connect to that tell me how much water's in it and how long it is to the tea's ready. Even though it's on my desk, that's <laughs> that's what I want. Mm. And that is hot tea. I knew that's gonna be hot tea the moment I entered the mouth. The mouth. The moment I entered the mouth. Hex is an imposter, is he? Am I? Am I an imposter? Am I an imposter? I don't think I am. I think I. Hold on. Hold on. No, it's definitely me. It's definitely me. Is it because I trimmed my beard last episode? Before last episode? Is that why I'm an imposter? I don't know, pseudo shred. I just don't know. Anyway, hello everyone. Who is everyone? Everyone's well. We've done this already. Um, so, what have I been doing this week? Well, I haven't got any like screenshots or anything as such to give you, but uh, my love of Vim has, <laughs> has just evolved. In fact, I probably can, can't I? I can go. I can go to. Uh, 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 oh, and I'm gonna i to do this on the fly now. Uh, dot, dot, stl dot, co dot uk. Uh, there you go. Uh, does that going to work? Does that work? Or does that send me nowhere? No, it does. It works. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been messing with Vim this week to the point where, like, I've, like, I feel like my Vim game is up this week um, because I've watched endless amounts of videos about Vim and using Vim. <laughs> And this is not an interesting topic, I know that. But like seriously, I've gamed less this week because I because I've been using Vim, which is really bad. There we go. Um the my my init dot vim is uh it's like two, it's like two hundred lines now. 
uh, which is just fucking ludicrous. I started off when I started off with Vim. I genuinely, I remember saying to Pseudo Shred, I don't get it. It's just he's fucking Nana stopping a hipster. Um, I actually, yeah, I said that, like, Paul, I said that, right? And I was like, I was proper, like, salty about it. I was just, I was annoyed by the idea that something so ridiculously convoluted could possibly be something you'd want to use. And now I'd go as far as saying I'm an enthusiast to the point where, like, it was like a game this week, learned, like, like doing Vim stuff was just something I genuinely enjoyed doing. Uh, but yeah, I actually, like, this whole thing, this whole Vim RC was written. It wasn't like, the few bits was copy and pasted, but it was, like, selected and chosen and built rather than being something that was actually, that was actually, I've just realized as well, I haven't done a git sync, a git sync, because a uh, git sync, a git push, whatever it's called, uh, because, like, this version's out of date. I've actually got, I've got a plugin manager now. That's how bad it's going. My Vim obsession uh, now, requires, <laughs> now requires a file manager. It's just, oh, man, that's just ridiculous, isn't it? Fucking ridiculous for a, for, for a text editor. But it's been a lot of fun. Um, I made it. Era had made it. Era, did you, Era? You made Vim? Really? Oh, okay. Good stuff. Good to know. Um, also, for anyone who is interested this week, um, today, in fact, um, an article wordy thing that I wrote uh, appeared on Ludical Linux, which is the site Drew runs. Um, and I wrote a thing um, kind of about clickers, but like not really about clickers. While the topic of the thing is clickers, uh, liberation of the mind and the art of clicking, um, it's not really about clickers. It's more about gameplay and how we interpret that gameplay and how we internalize that, as well as how like it can be an emotional crutch. I actually like proper worked hard on this. Like for I do, this isn't just one of those things where I just I wrote it and threw it over the wall. I actually like proper spent like three days writing this and like and, like wording it in ways I was happy with and like generally like yeah yeah generally generally like talking about like using clickers as a platform the stuff um yeah so yeah hmm. you, know, you might want to read that i don't know i'm gonna be spamming it everywhere though because I'm, I'm actually legit a little bit proud of it and i'm really like seeing it on a website here that's not just like not i say not just the x penguin club website because like you know obviously it'd be fine for the x penguin website but uh, a website that actually you know gets traffic and people actually do go to did i write it in vim did i write my vim rc in vim yes i did actually i did actually write my vim rc in Vim, I can probably show. In fact, I can probably show you this actually. Um, going off brand a little bit now, uh, and obviously backtracking for those of you that are pissed off. Look, I've got this. Um, I've got this. What have I? Have I got a? Uh, that's ripped too. Look, look. I've got. Um, look, I've got this like shortcut. Look, so I can go straight into. I can go straight into my Vim. I can just have SV on the command line as an alias, and it takes me straight to my Vim RC. But you know, you're serious about your Vim RC when you've got shortcuts built for it. You know, uh, you've got <laughs> you've got shortcuts for your Vim RC. It's it's shit's going shit's going wrong when you do it. it's going wrong when you're doing that with your life. Uh, anyway, yeah, the the clickers thing you should you should read it. I'm legit proud of it. Like like legit, I'm not happy with it. Um, Linux Paul says I have been playing with the fish shell this week. Uh, so my gaming flu is we gaming flu is weak. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Don't like this is probably gonna be my next article actually when I feel like writing in a few weeks. Um, is like where this article I wrote was about clickers and how like I used it as an allegory for other things. Um, I think gaming as a concept is weird because playing like you can game without playing games like enjoying like i've i've learned about vim and implemented that information and been messing with the with, with the config and stuff and that has literally filled the same itch as gaming has this week i've legit gamed like like my gaming has been education and like self-education and re-implementation of that and i don't think Gaming has to necessarily be a video game. I think that bit in your brain that makes you a gamer can be applied purposefully towards things. Because I think the problem is, I think the reason we like games is because we get really fucking bored, you know? And without something to do, we just go crazy. And uh, for me, like, you know, for, for me, it's, it's, it's probably... Um, represent itself in the channel in the streams in the the writing you know it's, it's all because i get really fucking bored um and if i don't do something if i don't channel that boredom i go to unhealthy like things as i talk about in the article um and i think like yeah i think i think learning can be gained. i think you're on linux and you're a gamer so like you're already probably on some level aware that like your need to do things is is really why you game or it's for me anyway but yeah yeah, uh, Pseudo Shred says, Oh, Hex, did uh, Hex DSL properly put uh, the time and effort into it? Which means it probably means it's great to even tell me my shit. Is. Yeah, it means everyone telling me my shit is. That's pseudo logic. You weren't hard on this. I'm going to piss on it. <laughs> it's just like, you love this puppy. I'm going to stab it. I'm going to stab this puppy. That's pseudo logic. 
I gain my job to get through each day. Yeah, yeah. I, t I know that feeling, yeah. I think I do things at work that, like, I start, like, timing how long it takes me to, like, perform a report and stuff. And I'll start, like, obsessing about, like, micro, like, like min-maxing that shit. It's, like, it's just in your brain. I think it's just in your brain if you're a gamer. And there should be an achievement in Vim. Yeah, someone should really... It'd be really... It'd be pointless but adorable if someone wrote an achievement list for Vim. You get a little achie like a little achievement pop up in Vim occasionally. I'd install the shit. I don't even like achievements, but I'd make it close to a game. I'd enjoy the shit out of that. Um, I don't know how you do it. You'd have to keep a permanent cache file or something. So I don't know how you do it. There's all sorts of security questions about that, but I'm sure it's doable. Um, I'm even thinking about how I'd write that in Lua now. Uh, yeah, I've got to stop. I've got to stop. Um, but yeah, maybe if you can find a plugin, Andrew, while we're streaming, that'd be great. We'll talk about that. <laughs> uh, next step, uh, Silmeth says next step is Steam controller profile for Vim. Oh man, that's a terrible idea. I mean, I've I've got a sixty percent keyboard. I mean, it's already like it's, I can hold it like a controller. So like like it's like a phone keyboard. It's so fucking small. So maybe I don't need that anyway. Maybe that's just why I don't use my Steam controller that much. Uh, <laughs> the term is proper hacker. Yeah, may, maybe a head. It's not. We're not gamers. We're proper hackers. Old school. You know, like we've got all hairy chests and like rrr, hacking. Rrr, yeah, <laughs> like like the, the early guys of the internet. I'm pretty sure there's a Git project where Vim achievements. I'd be that I'd like someone to find that. I'll install that. Uh, achievement unlock successfully exited Vim. That's not difficult. Look, there you go. Look, look, oh fuck. I don't know where the five came from. Well, you got that one, right? Or you got like that one. There's loads of ways to exit Vim. There's, there's loads of ways to exit Vim. Uh yeah. It's right. Anyway, Vim is for lamers. Silmeth gonna to, to, look, Ed is the standard editor. No, I mean, E D, I shouldn't say Ed. E D is is a good editor, but it's not really the same use case as Vim, I don't think. I don't think it has a use. We're gonna that maybe that's next. I mean, I learned Groff this week. I'm stepping backwards in time. I've done, you know, I'm doing Groff and Latex Hill at the moment, so maybe, maybe that's the one to use Ed in there. Achievement unlocked. Found three ways to exit Vim. <laughs> Wrong. Oh yeah, you found you exited Vim in all the methods possible. You must be a god. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, anyway, what have we got to talk about this week? We've got things to talk about other than Vim. Other than, although I could probably do a Vim cast at this point. Um, yeah. So first, let's 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 talk about the games I've played in some semblance of order, shall we? Um, so first one I played is, uh, and there's a video. Did the video go out this morning, or does it go out? Tomorrow? I think it went out this morning. Um, I played a bloody rally simulator. Um, now this is a we this is weird. It's weird because. It felt kind of like a scale electric or something. It just had a weird feel to it. The back end of the car spun around. There was a bit of drifting. And there was something there. Like, there's a lot there that I I kind of liked, right? And no fucking way. And you did find a plug. And you did legit find a plug-in for this. I'm, I'm just, just... I've got to find out. Got to find out. Oh, what the fuck? And June, you're doing, and June's doing the Lord's work. Are you sure you want to remove? No, I don't know why that's happening there. Uh, what's that? So... No way. Oh, it's on Git, the GitHub. Game. But uh, yeah, Achievement Master. Vim Achievements. Wow. Holy shit balls. Um, is that it? Is that just it? It's just one script? Wow. Okay. Um, fuck yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Vim Achievement is gonna go, it's gonna go in my Vim RC. Like the moment the show's over. <laughs> this is it. I'm also gonna I'm also gonna paste that into general. So I don't forget about it. Is is what I'm gonna do. We're gonna, good work, Andrew. Good fucking work. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, blood, blood rally team there. There's like there's something about a like. There's um, it's an indie game. It's it's it's. I don't know how much it's priced yet because it's not actually out till 18th of December. Um, the devs like sent me a code. And I was happy to have a look at it. And the the weird dissidence here is that the game graphically is a bit shit. Right, like I feel like it it needs a lot more work, right? Like I feel like it needs way more polish, like it's an early test. But the controls of the car and the way the car moves just reminded me of like like childhood games. It was like somewhere like I don't know, like I keep saying scare electrics or micro machines. It has something about it that's really tight and really well put together. Um, but then this whole idea of running over people to get a speed boost, I'm like, that was that was fun in Carmageddon. Like when in the nineties, like that stuff was like made me smile, but really like now, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we need to send that message all the crazies in the world. Maybe we didn't then either. Maybe that's what grown ups thought back then. But maybe that's it. Maybe that's why people objected to Carmageddon. Maybe because there was adults. There was like, we don't need this much evil in the world. We don't need this much, you know, distaste. 
and I was all like YOLO, run people over. So oh wow, I'm having a, I'm having a revelation here. But yeah, you know, I'm not sure. I think they focused on destruction and they focused on on the chaotic side of it. Where I actually think they could have focused on just being a really good racing game instead of being bloody rally simulator, just being like 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 tiny what like matchbox rally simulator or tiny rally simulator. And I think there could have been. I think the game still could be great. I just I really am interested to see what they can do with it between now and release because if it releases with a lot more graphical polish and a lot more. I know just a lot more general polish. I can't really think of any other word for it. Then it might be great. Um, found a few more, but I'm lazy sobering. <laughs> oh no, there's, there are Vim achievements though. Oh, I'm gonna have to check this out. It's a big thing for me. It's a big, really changed my life here. Um, yeah. So I can't say I recommend it mostly because it's not out yet, and, and also because I don't know how much it's gonna be. Like if this comes out, it's like three to five dollars. You're gonna go, oh fucking, that's great, yeah. But if this comes out at like fifty dollars, obviously it's not a recommend. This is very much one of those games where if the developer has a good handle on what it's worth, they could sell loads. And I could totally see this being fun if you've got a few mates around just like just zipping around the tracks with, with controls and stuff. Um I could totally see it filling that micro machines niche once they've got a bit more polish. And I really do think that that's, this is one of those games where it's not bad. It's just not special. You know, and it needs to be special to survive in in the current market. So, the video's out today. I talk more about it in the video, and and I think I was concise. I think I was concise. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it's hard. It's always hard. This is one of the reasons I don't really cover stuff until at the very least got a price. Usually, I either cover stuff if I'm confused by it, um, or if it's really good, then I'll talk about it before release. But if something's really bad or something's you know not at all interesting me, I tend to ignore it until it's released. Or this one, yeah. Um, Factorio Airhead, yes, yes. I still don't own Factorio. It's still on my list of things to pick up. I will eventually get Factorio, and then I will join your hype train, which I believe is a literal train named Hype. I don't know, but yes, Factorio's on the list. Uh, yeah, also, I played... I don't know if you guys saw the... Uh, saw, okay, I don't know if you guys saw the stream, but I did, I did play... I say play. I experienced a couple of hours of Observer. Now... Observer was, oh, it, I don't even know. It, it's it's two things is the problem with Observer. Now, you guys probably remember Observer being released. It was released in August of 2017. It got kind of like a lot of, I don't think a lot of hype, but it got a lot of attention, possibly, because it's aesthetically beautiful. I mean, the game is beautiful. There's absolutely no other way of saying it. The game is gorgeous to look at, and it is so incredibly cyberpunky. And I don't think, I, let's see if any of the videos actually tell us anything particularly useful about it um but you go into this cyberpunky world and there's all overlays and neon and it's the future i think but there's like there's like cassette tapes and vhs tapes and crts everywhere but also you've got this weird mad mental technology and rutger Hauer's does the voices of it and the character's obviously based on him and you quite literally deploy like don't play the part of a detective trying to solve a case inside this fucked up cyberpunk world all that is fucking gold i'll play that stuff till the end of fucking time i even made a video like again i made the video this week where i was like i didn't want to leave the room because i didn't want spoilers so i was ready and i was really into it up until the meat of the game kicks in which is where you have to inject your consciousness into other people's consciousnesses and then experience their memories in a fucked up weird order the the thing is that is utter horse shit it is hipster namdi pamdi too scary for you shit and I really hated every moment of the stuff that happened inside people's memories. To the point where, if you could just mod it out or just like concise it down to like 15 seconds of time, I'd be amazed by it. I would be totally, 100% balls in, ready to play it, right? But this, all of this like jumping into people's memories and experience abstract, nonsensical shit. I mean, even from the point of view of the narrative, where you're inside people's memories, it didn't make sense when J-Lo did it in the cell, you know? This idea that people's memories are this jumbled mess of abstracts, that's not how people think, and especially people that are connected to the technology. I mean, like, these people have got chips in their fucking heads, right? That, like, let, that, let, let them interact. And I'm just not sure there's any fucking point. I'm not sure there's any way someone would design technology that's so abstract to the point of being nonsensical. But yeah hack your fear yeah all that stuff it's just like yeah it, it it's just not good i mean that that's literally how i feel about it but i'm i'm very much the minority because people on the stream was like was watching it was like they loved it and people and most people already played it, it was great you know um it's for me just so far away from like the, the, the other bit that's like the, the the i don't know the housing around the the weird abstract stuff was great 
I want a game that with that stuff. Um, if anything, it made me want, like, I really hope Cyberpunk 2077 gets a Linux port or maybe works in Proton or Wine or something. But, like, it really makes me hope for that because I, I realise how there's a void for really good Cyberpunk games. Like, re like I know that like, there's a lot of pixely Cyberpunk games and stuff, but to get, like, a full sort of realistic aesthetic and be a Cyberpunk game, you know, it's we're missing that and we need a lot more of that. And, yeah, you can see more weird abstract shit in the trailer. It's just... It's just not at all for me i find it super annoying yeah it went from blade runner to fear runner it went from, they went from literally blade runner it was setting up to be this awesome blade runner thing and i was all in 100 percent, 110 percent in and then it switched to to the game fear which i just loathe with a passion i think the reason i didn't like it and this is always for me the reason why i don't like horror games is it was trying to be a horror game right which is fine if that's what they want to do um but the problem with horror games is they don't have mechanics as such. Like all the stuff outside of the uh, of the weird namby pandy shit, that was all. That stuff was all very um, well organized and very well thought out. And there was mechanics about scanning, and looking for clues, and finding little puzzles, all that. And then once you get into the psychological, like like abstract stuff, the only mechanic is wandering around looking for a way to activate the next abstract scene. Um, I it just didn't do anything for me. So I think. I think I'm in the minority. I think I think, I think yeah, look, very mostly positive, very positive. People love it, right? People really like it. And the layers of fear, layers of fear crowd definitely like it. It's by the same developer. There's there's lots to like if you're interested in that. But for me, I just I can't. I, I just really the, the the sort of the thing that's supposed to be the, the interesting bit ruined a great game for me. It just ruined it completely. I, really, I even uninstalled it. I was like, no. And couple that with the fact that my mouse doesn't work in the game. Um, like literally, and this isn't just me. There's a lot of people, even on Windows, have the same problem. Like you find, and you move your mouse, and you will click, and your mouse will just be released from the game. And then you have to go escape, escape, and then your mouse works with one click. So you can either do this constant escape, escape, do it, escape, escape, do it, escape, escape, do it, which is fine considering most of the game will be wandering around, not interacting with anything. But for all the bits we have to click, especially if you have to click fast, you can't do it. So I had to switch um, to the controller for it, which is just just. You know, not the way I want to play a first-person game at all. Hello, Nasui. Nasui is here. Hello, Nasui. Um, it's not the you know not at all the way that you want to do it. Uh, can I restart XP before we? No, but I will put it on a VOD. Um, I suppose if you go to the VOD, I believe does like. Does like X Penguin already appear in the VOD before it's over? Could you literally watch it on a, on like a thirty-minute delay? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you could. I don't know. But yeah, it's uh, it, it just it, yeah, it just it just wasn't for me. Just it's just not something I, that I'm all interested in at all. Yeah, not it's really it's so hard to like. Yeah, it's just it's just I feel really sad. It took a game I liked and just ruined it. Just ruined it completely. Yeah, time shifting. Ooh, crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the other one I played this week on my stream, and this will bring us to the topic of my uh <laughs> of my cursed streams this week, right? Is uh, I played Morrowind, or at least I tried to play, <laughs> to play Morrowind because I've had this thing this week where my um. My streams have been ropey, uh, and I've just realized the Morrowind logo's got a fork in it. What's this? There's like a fork up there above the end, like an actual dinner fork. That's weird. Anyway, random thoughts. Um, the first night, on Thursday night, I was ready to stream, and I had like, uh, someone like pointed out, uh, what was it? Someone pointed out a mic problem, and then I was chasing fucking mic problems for literal, literal fucking, like, few, like, probably about 15 minutes I was chasing mic problems, which meant the stream went down, I had to restart my computer twice, and it was a nightmare. And then yesterday when I streamed, my, um, my mic again was fucked, but my cameras was also fucked. Like, you know, I've got the two, the, 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 the two cameras. Um, only one had worked, but every time I restarted, it changed which one worked. Now, I just had a kernel update, and it's not the first time that kernel updates made my wife, made my wife, and I'm a USB, or, or wackety. Um, so I think it was something to do with that. I noticed there was another kernel update today, and now it's fine. But uh, I'm also of the feeling that perhaps I'm putting too much. I've got this old, um, I say old, yeah, it's probably old now. It's a couple of years old now. I've got this Amazon base. I'm tapping it under the desk. You can't see, but it's like, it's just, un it's it's literally like glue guns to the underside of the desk. And uh, I think the problem is I use a lot of USB devices. I didn't realize how much I used until like I actually started counting them. I've got like keyboard, mouse, um, trackball uh i've got the the numpad i've got my phone charger attached to it i've got two dongles for usb yeah i've got lots of things and they sort of add up over time um so i today i ordered an expansion card with like five usb3 ports and then two internals 
and I ordered that today. So um, I'm hopefully I'm going to alleviate some stress on the hub by moving a bunch of stuff, like the high speed stuff, to the to the, the PCIe um, USB thing. So hopefully that'll solve it in the future. Yeah, I mean I've got I've got heavy I've got powered USB, um, so I'm not too worried about that. And, and you know a lot of my stuff is powered separately. Um, but I think basically the problem is this Amazon Basics hub just hasn't got the throughput that I'm needing. I think it's causing some bottlenecking um, with certain configurations. So yeah, I'm, I've, I spent like 30 quid today ordering a really nice PCIe um, USB card. And hopefully the streams next week will be painless because I've got a few days. After this stream, I'm not streaming until Thursday. So I've got lots of time now to sort this out and get this nailed down. Um, I've been considered for a while now. I've been convinced that my microphone's on the way out. Um, the more I chest, the more I think about it. I mean, loads of myself. I've even got my reserve mic up here. Just in, just in case I've got my reserve mic. And every time I plug both of these fuckers in, they stop working properly. So I'm, again, everything I do leads me closer and closer to thinking that perhaps this is a uh, perhaps this is a throughput problem. Perhaps this is a problem with my USB. So by adding, by not using the motherboard's USB controller instead by switching to a PCIe one, I'm hoping I get a lot more joy. But anyway, that was a little random side note, a little random wonder off down there. Emotionally wondered off then. Um... This tea is much better temperature than myself. Um, so Morrowind, I loaded Morrowind last night after like I had multiple things not work because I had like a, a little like like flurry of things not working. Like I was gonna play Rusty La Rusty Lake Hotel, but uh, Proton is um. Let's face it, you probably know it, guys. Proton audio is shit. Some games it's fine, other games it's just shit, and it doesn't make any sense because Rusty Lake Hotel is basically a flash game that runs you know like its own little browser. And I wanted to play it, and I was like, I'm going to play all the Rusty Lake games one a night on stream. It's going to be, it's going to be fucking fabulous. And yeah, it just was a mess. It just the audio was like scratching and scratching all over the place. So I, and I didn't have a backup plan. So I chatted with the stream for a little bit, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to play something else. And that did went wrong. And then something else went wrong. And I was like, I'm going to play Morrowind. And I went through the intro to Morrowind, and it just like died as soon as I got out of town. And I was like, okay, we'll play Open MW, and we did that, and it just died. <laughs> So I may have managed to get Morrowind working using Open Morrowind Git uh, package in the AUR, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm fed. I'm going to play a little bit tonight, and I'm going to see how it goes. But I'm hoping I really kind of wanted to stream Morrowind because it, I did it mostly because Drew was poking me in streamers, and I was like getting desperate for something I actually fancied playing that the audience would like as well because those two things don't overlap particularly well a lot. You know, if you feel like I'm planning on playing a game and stream, I get into a certain mindset, and I don't really like changing games. I was like, I could do, I could stream some Morrowind. Um, so yeah, I was I was up for it, and then once I logged in, and once I actually started looking around, I was like, this world was like, I feel like I know it's aged, not great, you know, but uh, it looks like early two thousand Z, which it is, I and mean, it's two thousand two according to I think it was earlier than that. Actually, just made it Steam two thousand two is the date Steam. I'm sure it was earlier than that though. Um, and I played a relative amount of it back when I was a drunk, um, so I don't remember most of it, but I remember like the feelings and the vibes it had. Uh, so yeah, I was I was like, as soon as I logged in, I was like basking. I was like. It's, it's aged badly, but at the same time, I've got this weird sense of nostalgia and kind of half memories. Um, so I didn't remember almost anything. And I used to, I remember playing hundreds of hours of Morrowind. Um, or at least I remember that someone told me I played hundreds of hours of Morrowind. But I don't really, because I was drinking, I don't remember any of it. So I'm hoping, I think I might go back to it. And like these, these like the big taxi rodent things, the taxi bug things that are there. Um, so I was like, yeah, oh, I want to do this. And it might be a fun thing to do on stream. Um, <laughs> new survey, a random Windows user appears. Just play it on Windows. You'll have no issues. Uh, yeah, that's horse shit. Uh, <laughs> it's utter horse shit. Uh, oh, Matt, you horse. What? Okay. Uh, I don't, I don't know why he's slagging off Matt. That's not even here. And there is a little, like, oh, are you what whore? I thought I said you Matt whore. I was like, what? It's what whore. Dyslexia. It's wonderful. It's a treat. Every word's an adventure. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> at least they speak that way. Yeah. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. I, think, I don't know if people are interested in Morrowind. Um, I don't know if it's something people care about. But OpenNW seems to be a nice engine, runs in nice nice resolutions. The water looks beautiful. So let me know if you are interested. I'm probably going to stream it next week. I'm kind of up for it. Still can't believe a game from 2002. It's fucking 1299. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it is. But it also seems like the earlier version is balked for me. The stable version is balked for me. And the, uh, the unstable one isn't. I've never, I've never had a problem using Unstable. It's rare. Like, the only thing I don't run Git for, like, I actually, like, purposely don't run the Git version, is my web browser, because I do want that to be fairly static. But, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, early stable, but yeah, maybe, 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 maybe I should try an earlier version, but I'm fine. Well, if it works, I'll try the Git version. It's fine. It does, it's, a, it's only the push of their, uh, 
the most recent build though it's not like every single patch gets pushed it's it's only compiles their sort of them their uh their testing branch i think yeah, 12.99 for a game in 2002 that is harsh dudes i mean that seems like that does <laughs> just seem like a lot and the, the soundtrack 7.99 on its own fuck there's a lot going on here there's a lot going on i don't know about my morrowind must be far better loved than people than people remember but uh yeah that brings me to the end of the stuff I've played today. Um, right on schedule, because I'm shooting for one hour for the show. Exactly 30 minutes in. Great. <laughs> Good for me. And now I'm babbling and ruining it all. Um, but that, uh, yeah. But uh, on other news this week, and again, this is uh, this is probably old news at this point, but uh, it's the first ex-Penguin. I've talked about it. Um, we do, in fact, have an ex-Penguin forum now, which is, uh, which is at um, forum.x penguin.club it's actually like the hex dsl slash x penguin forum i didn't know whether to brand it as a hex dsl forum or x penguin forum and i don't know i feel like this show is one of the larger viewed things i do on the channel at least most consistently viewed so it felt like the right thing to do but if you are interested you can go to forum.xdsl.co.uk as well and you'll also get to the forum either one will work perfectly so you can go to either one if you want but the forum is uh it's i, I want to say it's going well it hasn't had a huge uptake we've got like we've got like uh we, how many members we've we got now we, we've had like uh one user online uh we've had a few people sign up anyway it's not i think we've got 23 people joined we've had 121 people simultaneously visiting the site after we after it was tweeted out and stuff which is really good i think that's a, I think that's a good number now the comments we've had back on the forum um most people like just like having a look and it's fine and that's that's fine and most people just have their nose around having a little read that a few people post technical support questions and some game conversations and as always with forums and stuff it is a uh, it is hard to get the ball rolling you know you need to slowly snowball a community uh most people are objecting to the fact it's php bb based uh honestly this is like a temporary theme at the moment we can have something a lot more uh purpley pinky a bit more neon at some point uh, I'm hoping at least we can get someone to do that for us. So this is a very temporary theme at the moment with Ionet Kinks. Um, Hamish set the forum up. He's big thanks to Hamish. He's worked quite hard on setting this up. And honestly, the people objecting to PHPBB, I don't get it. Because a forum is supposed to be like easy to use. And PHPBB is the most easy to use. And while they're more modern looking stuff, like discourse and stuff, they all have a lot more overhead to run from the point of view of the people hosting it i mean like we tried setting up a discourse uh, forum and the fact that only you can only download it as part of a container as part of a docker container and then you need an external smtp server to, to to run it and stuff there's a lot of minor things that make it very hard to maintain and make it very hard to interact with like just with php bb if i need to upload a plugin for the forum we just upload it and then that's it and it just appears where with discourse you've got like you've got like have a separate because it exists inside a container you've got like a separate piece of space to put it and it does get a little bit you know what nisu you want to make it for a topic for for, for uh tour and you carry on i'm, I'm gonna I'll, I'll pin that shit nisu i'll pin that shit but yeah and there's there's lots of like general reasons why php bb at the moment seems fine and it's also very migratable and very customizable so if for whatever reason we don't get on with this tried and tested open source piece of software right we can migrate in the future something else especially if there's an audience for it so yeah i'm, I'm yeah i mean look it's fine to me as i'm not a big forum user but all the i stated in a video i made announcing the forum all the reasons we went with the forum um and what the reason it exists is and yeah, I'm not. I'm just really confused by the people who are objecting down to the underlying technology. It's like it's fine. We're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna talk to Hamish about adding some of the uh, some of the suggested add-ons that do uh, so you can do targeted replies. You can add people basically, and also number the posts. So you can say post number four. You can link post numbers. Um, there's a, there's a lot of things it does that I like, um, and it's classical. Like it, it's been the reason it's still around. And it's been around since like 2002, and it's been it's been developed consistently there. Yeah, it's familiar. It works properly. I don't understand. People seem to only object because it's not discourse, which is a dangerous place to be in. And as Linux users, surely we understand choice better than anyone else. But I'm hoping anyone watches this wants to check out the forum. At the very least, like register and say hi. I, you know, because as I, if if this if something goes wrong on Discord, where the bulk of the community is, or something goes wrong on YouTube, as YouTube could quite easily start charging you to upload videos, and then I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, if anything goes wrong with all the ways we communicate, the forum is static. It's controlled privately. Hamish has got a, got a VPS he's using to host it. It is 
under our control as a community you know and it's under my control as a creator so it's very important to me that this is at least you know at least we we, we this is not something that's going to be abandoned anytime soon and uh i i really feel strongly that like people have said like why don't you just set up a subreddit and stuff um because that is again putting ourselves inside other people's services and that takes away our control and our independence and i don't get why people don't get it genuinely but anyway, it's there if you want to use it. It's there, and the logo now works because it was spooky for a while. Uh, in other news, dun, 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 that's not related to me. Um, yeah, DreamHack Atlanta uh, Red Hat is excited to sponsor the first uh, our first esports event, DreamHack Atlanta, on November sixteenth to the eighteenth. 2018 dreamhack is the world's premier esports festival that celebrates the lifestyle of the gamer and red hat will be there to sponsor a number of activities and provide technical support both for attendees who want to talk about games at open source platform also and this is where this is where it's interesting is friend of the show and regular um arch toasty is uh, who is a red hat employee is going to be there talking to people about like games and stuff and they're they're showing people uh, linux as a gaming platform and they've got like they've got a lot of, of um overwatch there as well as some native games they're basically there to be like look linux is a gaming platform you know and uh and even if i, I don't know how it's gonna go i'm really looking forward to hearing um, we've got arch toasty on the show next week to come in and talk to us about how it went and hopefully shed some light on the things that happened but the for the um the Discord, you can't Discord. No, I'm saying the word Discord again. The um, there you go. <laughs> the Reddit conversation that happened here, where he announced uh, his presence there and talked about what they're going to do. Get a lot of, get a lot of quite a few replies. People seem interested and supportive of him. I mean, look at this. This thing keeps going. People seem interested and supportive of this, which I really like. And yeah, I don't know anything about DreamHack. It seems like an odd name for it. I'm sure there's a historical reason why it's called DreamHack. Um, but yeah, a lot of people there playing games, doing esports, and Red Hat's going to be there as well. So it's an interesting direction to see Red Hat move. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about Red Hat being the people that showcase Linux as a gaming platform when they're going to be pushing Fedora, which isn't really the best gaming platform. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it is. I mean, I know that Pseudo Shred uses, um, uses, uses, still uses, used Fedora, and he games on it without any problems. So it's not like, again, the choice of distro is massively arbitrary it's just the tools and the workflow really but uh, I, I don't instantly think gaming distro when i think of fedora i think of development environments and i think of and i think of stable releases and i think of you know the lots of things i think of that aren't gaming but yeah i'm really looking forward to talking to watch toasty next week he'll be on hopefully if it all goes well and we will talk in great depth about what happened all the sorts of things he spoke to sorts of people he spoke to you know and generally how it went down there because i'm wondering are these people going to be like linux friendly over at dreamhack i don't know uh, it's probably Art Toasty's idea. That's why that's why he represents it. Yeah, he's just like he gets a job at Red Hat and he's like, Now how can I go to DreamHack? And he's just like he's got his uh, evil Spock beard and he's all like, hmm <laughs> He's just like, How do I do it? And this is all a big ploy. The second he's been three, I can be like quit Red Hat, fuck you, everyone install everyone, everyone install Ubuntu. Fuck <laughs> fuck this. Yeah, I do think it's funny as well that his, his username is Arch Toasty. I really want to see how long it's going to be before he's going to change his name to Red Toasty. I guarantee he's going to rebrand to Red Toasty at some point. In fact, I'm, I'm predicting that right here. Red Toasty is what's going to happen. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, good stuff. I don't know you guys feel about it. What's happening? What's happening in chat there? Uh, Fedora Toasty. I don't know. It doesn't roll off the tongue as well as Red Toasty. Red Toasty is not the right thing. Fedora Toasty. Mm. I, don't th I don't think you really should have your... Uh, I don't think you should have. I think your username should be abstracted away from everything. Like, like I think like Arch Toasty. The second he installs Ubuntu, like everyone's like, "Are you still going to be Arch Toasty? You can be Ubuntu Toasty." I feel like being abstracted away is a good thing. Like Corbin, for instance, you know, Corbin can run where he wants. Yeah, and then but Arch Toasty is always going to be associated with Arch. And so mind you, I'm Hex DSL. So you know, there's there's that. Uh, so, <laughs> I don't even know how I end up with this username now. At this point, stupid. I should have thought of something else. Didn't know what DSL was defined as an urban dictionary when I chose that name, obviously. It becomes an arch hex. Yeah, it wouldn't be a reference to my distro, it'd be a reference to my rank in the world. The arch hex. Oh, no, no. Like, I don't know, like the arch, archbishop, arch hex. See? Huh? Get it? Huh? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Sexy arch hexy. <sighs> Ooh, it kind of works, Corbin. It kind of fucking works, doesn't it? Ooh, that's the chance. Yeah, either, either way, I, I don't even run Arch. Anyway, I run, I run Antigos at the moment, so <laughs> that's out the window anyway. 
Damn small Linux hex, yeah. Hex damn small Linux, yeah. I've gone with does some Linux, but we all know what it's defined as on uh, on Urban Dictionary, don't we? <laughs> and a lot of servers are running Red Hat. Center. Yeah, a lot of game servers are running CentOS and Red Hat. I mean, they're not out of the space, but it's still an odd an odd thing for me. Puppy hex, yeah, that'd go down well. Get the wrong rep there. It's even worse than DSL there. And yeah, Red Hat's a sign there. It's birth oh, that, we read that one already. Let's go on to the next bit of news anyway. I don't want to, like I said, I've got some thoughts on this, but anything I say now is going to be repeated in my discussion with Arch Toasty because he's, you know, he's the man to ask. He's going to have been there. He's, you know, he's one of the people that's posting these things and talking about it. So, yeah. Uh, Deltarune, for the Deltarune subreddit, uh, talked about Deltarune running natively on Linux. What the fuck? Toby Fox didn't make this port. This was a clever person doing clever things with clever things. And this clever person who does clever things with clever things um, managed to make a binary for Deltarune in Linux. Which is, <laughs> you did it. I'm proud. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It is, uh, it is awesome that Deltarune is the sequel to, uh, Deltarune is the sequel to Undertale, if anyone didn't know. I say sequel, it sort of was released as free, and Toby Fox, the developer of, of uh, Undertale, was like, no one talk about this for like a day. Uh, and people broke that, obviously, and just talked about it. Um, but uh, it is the sequel, it is a relatively short episode, uh, and there's going to be more episodes, and I, I doubt the first, the, the first one's free, the rest are probably going to be paid for, but there's a lot of content here in this game that is that is for free. I have yet to play it, I'm, I think I'm, I want to replay, I kind of want to replay Undertale, but it's not something I want to replay on stream, because I think Undertale, the experience I had with Undertale the first time around was a little bit more emotional than I expected, and I don't want to really share that with the stream, you know, I, wanna, that's, I had a moment with Undertale, you know. I think most people can relate to that when it comes to Undertale. It's a beautiful game. One of the best games ever, really. Um, and I was a bit sad when Deltarune didn't come to Linux. So it's nice that someone's done it for us. I just hope that this is something that's not that's not going to be a one-off. I kind of hope that we're going to see this updated with patches. And I kind of hope that we're going to see this, if any more episodes come out, is it going to happen again? Um, just disappointed that it's not that it's not been Toby Foxed anyway. Uh, it does run in uh, Wine, apparently, without any problems. So you can still run it even with that. Hex from Scratch. Oh, see, that's even better, Silma. Hex from Scratch is even better. But, um, yeah, so it's nice. And the wizarding that went on to take an existing binary from an existing engine and then re-import that and then re-export it as a different platform is smart on a level which I understand theoretically only. Couldn't find anything so far, uh, but Deltarune has... Uh, permeated the letters. You know what? Has permeated the letters as in Undertale. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what's happening there. Uh, oh, Delta. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. Undertale would be much better game if there was an option to avoid annoying bullet hell aspect. I like bullet hell in this Chan, so I never had that. Even though I, uh, even though I, 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 I agree that maybe it was too much for a lot of people. I think there has to be a gameplay mechanic, and it's something kind of detail. It has to be a struggle. Like your struggle as a person, and the struggle of the character was very. Was, there was a lot. Of, there was almost. I don't know. It was aware. It was a video game in in the way that it's rare. I mean, the only other game that, that I've played recently, anywhere near recently, that knows it's a, a video game, um, is is um, is near Automata, where it, it reveled in the fact it was a video game, and that's the only other one I've played in, literally like. They're so few and far between, which is crazy. Given how interactive and, and how wonderful a storytelling method um, it is, it's crazy that so few of them do that. And most things are like, we're going to replicate a movie, you know? Not many not many of these games like like actually tell a story in a way that makes them a game, what Undertale did. Anyway, this has devolved to me babbling about it. Uh, it did very clever with the bullet hell. I just couldn't stand it. Well, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, there's... They had to pick a mechanic, you know. I think that's the problem, isn't it? And as with all games, you're not going to please everybody. I have heard a few people say though that they bought Undertale, never loaded it, and then just watched a, watched a playthrough of someone else's, and they got the story they wanted out of it through somebody else's eyes, uh, which is very interesting because Undertale is the kind of game where every experience is different. So you, you could play it, you could watch ten people play it and get one thing out of it, and then when you play it yourself and you struggle through it yourself, you have something different. So. I'm interested in it. It's it's a wonderful game. I'm very interested in. Yeah. You actually did that too. Yeah. I mean, I think that's fine. I think I think 
I kind of think that while I don't, while I think you should be able to enjoy something without feeling the need to pay for it, I think when something is really, really good and touching and unique, I kind of want that thing in my library in case it ever disappears. Because like this week, we've had some of the smaller, um, we've had some of the smaller Telltale titles have been removed from Steam. And uh, that's a shame. I mean, it's, it's genuinely like a shame that they've been removed. But if you already own them, you get to keep them forever. So, like, if Undertale went away, it'd still be in your Steam library, or still be in your, or still be in your like your GOG library to download. You know, and I think that's, I don't know, that's kind of why I feel like something that's really great needs buying. I bought it and played a certain amount of it up until where the combat became too frustrating and the like. Yeah, I didn't. I did it. I did it mostly. I didn't. Mostly, it wasn't combat. Mostly, it was dodging for me more than combat. I didn't really fight as such yeah the telltale games as far as i know a, like a bunch of the telltale games have already been removed um they all obviously if you own them they're like in your library already but like bats the future has been removed the things basically the ips reverted back to the uh the ip for certain games like the, the ownership of it reverted back and it's just some funny legal thing so a lot of them have been removed the larger ones are still going ahead um i think that's more down to the uh the the ip owners are pushing that forward i know a third party company is now finishing the walking dead and batman and stuff um yeah it's a shame i mean it's always a shame i mean like logically you you want to think they like would want to sell them they should they should have made a big debate these are only on here for a week you know and then people would have rushed out to buy them i could have made a lot more money but i don't know it seemed like a weird thing to do i'm sure it's all about intellectual property laws and stuff it usually is um there's a new game on the feral radar here's the clue let's have a look at the clue here's the clue yeah this is the clue on the Feral Radar. For those of you who don't know, um, Feral Interactive do a thing before they release a new game, before they announce a new game, where they uh, give you a clue for the game. It's, like a bit, it's a bit of a fun game. I don't think it's supposed to be particularly, you know, it's not supposed to be particularly engaging. But uh, there's a picture, basically. And you look at the picture, and it's on the radar. It's like it's either far out on the radar, close on the radar, or imminent on the radar. It gives you an idea of how close to development it is. It's just like it's just like a way of sort of announcing something as well as gauging their interest. Because if they show you a picture and everyone's like, "Oh, it's this game," and it's not, they can go, "Oh, maybe that game does need porting." Then it's a bit of a marketing stunt combined with a bit of market research. And this is a rock, I believe, in Peru, Peruvian rock. Uh, yeah, it has to be Shadow of the Tomb. I see already. You can see in chat here. Spoiler: It's Tomb Raider. Uh, somebody found the pick it came from. It's the same. Uh, yeah, they've done that before though, and it's not. It's not really been. Like a thing, you know, it's it's not it's not I don't know. Um, it might not be. I wouldn't be. I mean I'm gonna be shocked if they don't port Tomb Raider. Like maybe that's why they've done such a straightforward thing where they're just like, Yeah, you know, it's it's Tomb Raider. Uh didn't have joined the first two. Yeah, I haven't played it. My daughter's played it. My daughter's played a lot of Shadow of the Tomb Raider. She really, really, really it like likes Tomb Raider games and she said it was the weakest one of the three. Um she still played it like seventy hours, but she's the weakest one of the three. Cryptic equals tomb, obscure equals shadow. Hmm. It's a, crypt, it's a cryptic obscure? I don't know what this picture's called. Oh, yeah. The cryptic obscure.jpg is where this, the full name comes from. So, yeah. Peruvian rock, which is the same thing from Peru. It's either Tomb Raider or a Total War game. Yeah. See, well, well yeah, actually, yeah. We'll talk about Total War shortly. It's Fortnite. Yeah, it's Fortnite. Like you were saying. Um, I don't, I don't know how I feel about them sort of milking the audience for extra PR here and stuff. You know, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. But at the same time, people seem to enjoy looking at the clues and working it out. And I think the the Reddit hive mind has been right more than wrong. I think, I think they have been mostly right. Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Uh, speaking of Total War, just jump ahead in the show notes a little bit. Um, Total War Warhammer Two is now available for £39.99 on the Feral store. There is not a lot to say about it right now. Um, there's just a very small store entry, mostly because that's error. Let's refresh that and see what happens. You like the radar clues? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about them, is the honest answer. I, I oh, look, look, it's, already, it's down. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's just try going to store.feral.com and see if we can get there directly. Uh, Warhammer 2. Okay, Warhammer 2. Yeah, that seems knackered. Uh, that's uh, an error of 500, so okay, good stuff. Yeah, I don't, like I say, I'm not sure how I feel about the clues. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's disappointing when it turns out to be yet another Total War game. Yeah, someone on the subreddit was like, uh, like Total War is Feral's waifu, but Tomb Raider is its, it's, it's side wife. <laughs> it's just always that made me smile. Uh, I don't usually play Total War games. I ignore the Total War games that Feral release. It's not something I cover on the channel. However... There's something about that Total War thing and a fantasy universe. The jelling of the two, 
fantastic. I just wish it was Warhammer 40k instead of the retro one. The Hex Effect. Such a large community of hexes with crashed failed store page. Uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think us 21 people have crashed the store page. But I'd like, I'll just lie and say we definitely crashed the store page. For the audio listeners, we're getting a server error 500 on the feral store page. I keep forgetting about the audio listeners and then most of the listeners. Total War Skyrim. See, there's, there's like so, there's so many things you can do. Total War. I want Civilization Total War or something, a you know, Civ 6 Total War edition. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it lends itself great to the Warhammer franchise. Um, and I would really like to see like the Warhammer 40k stuff because that's sort of, even though it's grim dark and I'm not sure that I like it, I still want to experience more of that universe. So yeah. Um, but yeah, here's Total War 2. There's the DLC available as well. And there's shitloads of DLC available. You can't even get to the DLC. Look, the servers crash too much. Total War <laughs> Life is Strange Edition. Yeah, that'd be great. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not kidding. I don't like those Life is Strange games. I keep trying them and I just don't like them. A Cyberpunk Total War. See? The next Paul's thinking. That'd be great. I like the fact that Total War games are like a board game. But then they're violence. But if you're doing it right, you can sort of ignore it. You can just be like, sort of like, you go fight and that's it. I like it. The first Warhammer Total War, I think I've played like 30 hours of or something. Um, and I enjoyed it, but I just felt like nothing was quite baked. I felt like everything was like hard, well, three quarters baked. You know, every idea was like not quite there. And I've heard Warhammer 2 as Warhammer Total War, Total War Warhammer 2 has addressed that issue. And they're, they've really sort of nailed it, as well as being able to use all the DLC from the first game. So I'm I'm really looking forward to playing this game. It's a game I'm I'm really excited about, uh, and I don't know why. Like I say, I'm I'm not usually into them, but yeah, yeah, definitely one to watch. For uh, Valve has ex, uh, has expanded their Steam Player whitelist. Uh, this is just the best list I could find was the one on Gaming on Linux. It's a great list as always, all the little links and stuff if you want it. Um, and honestly, the yeah, it, honest, there you go. Yay! Uh, honestly, it's it's a it's a good list. I mean, like it's 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 good stuff. They've added a lot of good shit. Um, that brings the total game number up by a huge amount. Uh, and it's it's there's a lot of stuff that's good. Steins Gates on there. Good to see that. Nothing particularly excited. Pac Man Champion Edition XD is good to see. I kind of at the moment I'm now looking at this list, which is quite like big. And there's, don't forget the other two releases as well. There's a lot on this list. I kind of feel like at this point they should maybe identify them on the Steam page, you know? Like a golden SteamOS logo or a SteamOS logo with a star, a, a pentacle, and a small ram head that worships the blood of an innocent. Now, you know, they should do something to do. I don't know what's going with that, actually. They should do something um, to, to do. As soon as I got to play Neverwinter Nights via Steam Play, except I had a mouse polling bug. Yeah, these bugs are long-standing things. I'm sure they're going to fix soon. I feel a like valve the sound is something they really need to fucking work on, and they're aware of it, which is why they've hired the people they've hired. Dark Souls 3 was totally on sale for £14 at Chrono.gg. Uh, yeah, I've got Dark Souls uh, Dark Souls 3. I intend to look at it. Glorious Eggrolls here. Rejoice! <laughs> Yay! Uh, yeah, this... Uh, this list here is is awesome, and they just at this point though, there's no point having a goal, having a white list, when you've got Proton DB, you know, unless you can identify them on store page somehow. And I still, I know it's a hot topic, and people still have a lot of feelings about whether or not these games should be considered native, and whether or not we should be buying them as Linux users. I don't want to get involved in that, but everyone must agree. There's no point in having a whitelist if it's so fucking hard to find. Like, how do I go to a store page? How do I get a whitelist on Steam, you know? How do I go to Steam and go, I want the whitelist. It's not fucking there. It's not there. It's stupid. Um, So I'm looking forward to that happening. Star Wars Dark Forces. Oh, there's one to play. Weirdly, Dark Forces is a, is a DOSBots game on Steam. And I've had a lot of problems with DOSBots games. Where I've loaded, like, um, I don't know if anyone's got Blake Stone. I was like, I'll play Blake Stone. Yeah. I load Blake Stone up and I just get, like, like it drops out to the DOSBox C prompt. And I was like, what the fuck? I've noticed like five or six of my uh, of my of, of the games I've tried that are DOSBox just don't work. I don't know if I have to do something specifically title by title basis or not. Yeah, Glass Masquerade. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Is there? Uh, do I have? I'm trying now. I'm thinking of the games I don't have. That I want to try. Uh, what? Set it to five hundred or lower. Hmm, I can do that on my mouse. I've got a button here that does that. Click that, and it sets my polling rate to five hundred. I've grown a thousand right now. It seems fine. Uh, what from what I can gather, never went tonight specifically needs one twenty five hertz. Yeah, that's low polling. But anyway, that's a whole separate conversation I'm getting sucked into. 
Yeah, oh, the list can be found at SteamDB, Corbin, bro. I'm not about, like, if you're a regular user, you're not like someone who's a massive gaming enthusiast. You're just a dude on Steam who just wants to look for a game to buy, and you're on Linux. There's no way of telling. Not unless you jump to these hoops and go to the external stuff. Yeah, Pokemon the Inventory is great. Is that on the list, is it? Pokemon on the list? Oh, yeah. I've got both of those. They're great, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, again, okay. maybe. Yeah, until it's gone, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. The labors of Hercules. There are some shit games on it. I mean, there are some games I don't care about. Dark Souls 3. I keep I keep wanting to play Dark Souls 3 because I played the other two extensively. I don't really like Dark Souls. I just kind of like, I don't know, I like the progression factor of Dark Souls, but I hate the actual gameplay. So I'm kind of like torn on Dark Souls. I'm waiting for that sci-fi Dark Souls to come out. What was that called? There was a sci-fi Dark Souls at one point that was, in, that was on Early Access. No, Kickstarter. I must look back at that. I think it's on my channel somewhere. Someone dig into that. Uh, just a remark, a nice indicator. Uh, yeah, just just like just like a little tick or like a little golden Steam logo. It's just anything to give you an idea. Or like even a grey Steam logo, like because it's cause Steam, normal colour Steam logos like this is a Linux game. Like a greyed out Steam logo seems like a reasonable, like a reasonable halfway house. Uh, another gaming on Linux article, and this is really an afterthought I've added to the show, um, is uh, this, I saw the article that Liam wrote about this war of mine. Um, is now come the, the DLC the the last broadcast is now coming to Linux. I was like, oh, because they said it wasn't like a week ago. I was just like, oh, and I thought I'd better mention that because I can't remember if I mentioned on the show that it wasn't coming. And I couldn't be bothered to go back and look into the vods or read the show notes because I'm very lazy. <laughs> so I was just like, I'll mention it. But yeah, this war of mine. Now the whole this is the last DLC for it. The, this is the last of the stories DLC. So I don't think we'll see any more DLC. This war of mine. I think this is sort of it. And yeah, this is uh, this is this is definitely coming to Linux now. Um, yeah, it says here the Mac and Linux versions uh, modding game control support for DLC are coming soon. Give us a few days; it shall come uh, in one nice patch. Sorry for the delay, which is funny when a few weeks ago that was just like no. Yeah, I don't know what's happening there. Uh, uh, going to sell the what? What's this? Uh, Lo Laura Zegrol says. Uh, I'll better turn that off. Here you go. Laura Zegrol says I bought a new Logitech 600 to replace my old. One because it was on sale for twenty five dollars. I switched out my Corsair shit. Yeah, Corsair professionals, Corsair professionals, at Grohl. They've gone downhill because I used to have an M sixty five mouse, which is what that mouse with a very steel bottom, and it was a solid fucking mouse with a lot of like air in it. You know, um, I really like that mouse. And it, yeah, the surge, the sound, the dark side, the sci fi one. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting distracted again. Um, yeah, I I also have recently tried some Corsair stuff, and it's been plasticky shit. Um, yeah. But uh, it's weird to talk about peripherals because uh, the last item, and this is not sponsored or anyone says it. And there's also no, there's also no like uh, no affiliate link here. But uh, the uh, the trackball I use, the um, that is the uh, huge, uh, is on sale. Well, it's not on sale. It's, it's dropped its price. It's now down to sixty five pounds ninety nine. It was eighty nine ninety nine. Uh, and it's severely dropped in price recently, so I just thought I would push that. Uh, yeah, she'll sell out. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just. I, I'm so happy with it, and I think a lot of people would be happier with a mat with a trap ball than a mouse for everything except first person shooters. Um, I still have my uh, I have my uh, my Zowie on the desk of first person shooters, but everything else, dungeon crawlers, card games, everything else I play uh, gets done on this. So uh, I just thought I'd let you guys know that it's it dropped in price substantially. It's like it's literally taking like fifteen pound off the top of it. I just thought you might know that anyway. Lots of other choices. Lots of other choices. I've also got the Kensington Expert, which is actually weird. The Kensington Expert has gone up in price, while the uh, the huge has gone down in price. I'm like, the huge is the better device. I've got both. But yeah, it's weird that it's weird that the prices have fluctuated so much recently on these things. That's really crazy to me. But I thought I'd mention it anyway. This is interesting. This is inter well, I'm, I'm interested. I like them. I'm interested in them. It's good. Uh, yeah. Nightbot giving people the good information. Uh, I keep also randomly... Oh, uh, I, if anything wondering, you'll see five appear in my uh, chats a lot at the beginning of sentences because when I hit five, it toggles my web browser. And if I happen to have... Here you go. And if I happen to have that selected, <laughs> it goes into chat. So yeah, there are there are reasons you see the number five from me a lot. I'm sorry about that, guys. Probably shouldn't map it <laughs> to a number. I should probably get like one of those stream deck things. But they're so expensive and I'm so cheap. So incredibly cheap. Yeah, if you if you are interested anyway, also don't forget my clickers article as a, like a final reminder is on Ludical Linux. Um, it'd be cool if people would like have a little look at that, have some thoughts on it. You know, maybe come give me some feedback on it. That'd be great. T 
see if you guys thought it was good or not. Um, and that is it for this week's X Penguin. Um, there you go. There you go. Yay. Uh, yeah, that is it for this week's X Penguin. We've uh, we've made it to an hour and three minutes, so I think we've done well at keeping on time this week. And uh, I will be back next week with Arch Toasty to talk a lot about DreamHack. I would, yeah, I think a lot. I think we're going to talk a lot about DreamHack, and we're going to talk a lot about esports. So next week will be the esports special. So thank you very much for coming to this illustrious episode. Illustrious is the right word. No, thank you very much for coming to this episode of X Penguin. Um, do some super tux multi super tux card multiplayer. No. No, we'll not do Super Tux Card Multiplayer because why the fuck would I? On that note, I'm going to upload this show for Patreons who get the MP3 feed instantly. Well, as instantly as I can manage where everyone else has to wait till like Monday or whatever Drew gets time to do it. And uh, yeah, and if you would like to hit me up on the forum, every episode will be posted on the forum. Show notes will be posted on the forum from now on going forward. Um, that's the thing I'm going to be doing. So feel free to jump in on the forum or to jump in on, you know, on, on the Patreon and come say hi. Come say hi. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people that lurk and watch this but don't get involved. Yeah, maybe a torrent speed run. <gasps> no. But thanks for the offer. You guys have to donate a lot to make... <laughs> There'd have to be a lot of bits coming in to make me even consider consider a torrent speed run. Like, seriously. Like, a lot. Because it was awful. It was the, it was so bad I nearly stopped playing games entirely. It was so... Torrent was so bad I nearly closed my YouTube channel. So, yeah. I like the way he's like he's also found a way around the bot now by adding... He's found out the sweet number of O's to add. Because there's like 45 variations of Torrent that bot blocks. So he's uh, <laughs> he's, he's chill finding ways around here. Thanks to the show. See you, Sexy XE. Time for some Beat Saber. Yeah, everyone go watch Corbin. Um, yeah, I don't think Hamish is streaming. Yeah, everyone go watch Corbin. It'll be fun. Thanks for watching. I love you all. Good night, everybody. <laughs>